This is Gun Cranks. Hi there, everybody. Yes, we haven't been canceled yet. We are the Gun Cranks. Welcome to our, our little show on our little corner of the internet. We've got another great episode for you. We're going to talk, we've got a special guest of honor, uh, somebody that's going to be really important to what's going on to with Gun Cranks and our publications. Uh, Tom, I think you're going to talk about some super secret ninja tactical flashlighty stuff kind of stuff. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm kind of thinking of a, an illuminating discussion on oh, flashlights. Uh, Thank uh, you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll be here all week. So wow. And Roy is going to talk <laughs> trips and t see. I always do that. Tips and tricks with baby guns, little baby guns. Yeah. Is it small, medium, or large? Stay tuned to exactly. find out. Super size it. And then in our final segment, I'm going to talk about Martha Stewart and Chuck Norris and the NRA. So don't miss that on important news and views. So gentlemen. Shall we kick the tires and light the fires on this episode of Gun Cranks? And away we go. <laughs> you know, a lot of people in our industry think there really isn't a future. And I'm here to tell you that if you're one of those, you are exactly wrong. <laughs> and one of the reasons for that is someone who I'm going to introduce you to right now. Uh, a year or two ago at the SHOT Show, I was fortunate enough to meet a absolutely wonderful young lady, uh, Serena Juknowski, and uh, she has a lot of interesting things that she does. She's a, a rifle shooter, she's a champion, but I think more importantly for all of us is she's smart and she's got a lot of drive and she's interesting. So uh, Serena, welcome to the Gun Cranks. <laughs> Thank you welcome. for the introduction and for the kind words. I really appreciate it. Welcome. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You're actually really easy to uh, introduce like that. I want to give just a little bit of backstory. I was strolling at the SHOT Show and I walked into the Mossberg booth and old friend Linda Powell was there talking to Serena. And I walked up and I think I said, oh, I don't want to interrupt or something. And, and Linda looked at me and said, you're actually exactly the person that I want to meet right now. <laughs> and uh, she introduced me to Serena and Serena had been asking her about how do I get into the industry? How do I write? You know, what's, what are the best things I should learn? And uh, so fortunately we met there and then Serena, you came by the booth afterwards and we had a good chat, right? Yeah, it was pretty great. I'd been freelancing for a little bit, but I was still looking for a bigger step into what you want to say the big time part of the industry. That was my second SHOT Show, so that was 2020 before everything went a little bit crazy. Sure. Well, you know, we had a really good chat, and one of the things right off the bat that impressed me was your shooting experience. Not a lot of young people your age have the sort of pretty significant experience. Can you bring us up to date on that kind of briefly? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of kids that compete in things like small bore air rifle that are collegiate sports. I compete in high power service rifle in addition to Palma. So 200, 300, and 600 yards with an AR-15, and then Palma is 800, 900, and 1,000 yards with a uh, 308 with iron sights. So the gun's about as tall as I am. It has a 30 inch barrel on it. Roy, Roy, those are the yes. rifles, just to set, clarify things here, those are the rifles that make you cry when you shoot them? <laughs> that, yeah, I'm, this is a, I'm a sissy when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the part that kind of blows the mind of we old guys like that, is you see this you know, young, attractive, bright <laughs> woman, and she shoots these big bore rifles in pretty serious competition. So, well, Serena, I noticed right off the bat, uh, because I went onto your blog and onto some website and I saw some articles you had written, uh, is that one of the things I like about you is if you don't know something, you don't pretend you do and you no. admit it. Uh, but the nice other side of that is the fact that you actually know a whole lot too. And uh, I know, uh, some time went by and it turned out fairly recently that we were looking for someone to bring aboard, uh, someone to handle kind of the digital side of FMG, at least initially. And guess whose name came up? It was Serena's. <laughs> so congratulations. Are you happy about being part of the team here? Oh, I'm, I'm beyond thrilled. You have no idea. To be honest, I'm still in shock. I, when I first got the email, it was completely out of nowhere, and I'd been looking for more of a home in the industry, and I'm so happy that I found it, or it found me, rather. Well, tell me something. What, 
what is the challenge so far right off the bat? Like now you're doing what I like to call a real job here <laughs> in publishing with a company that's 70 years old. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity for you. It's a good opportunity for us too. But right off the bat, uh, what did you sort of find your eyes opening to? I guess the biggest thing has just been how everybody works together because I've been so used to kind of working on my own or one-on-one -on -one with an editor rather than with an entire team and having somebody, multiple people actually, to bounce ideas off of and ask for feedback without there being any kind of animosity between. You know, you just said something really important and I think it's what the difference is between what we do and what just some guy in a blog somewhere is that I think you're already finding out is that you have a lot of peers here that constantly vet our content. Right. And so I think part of the fun of having you here is now we, we actually have someone who really understands precision rifle shooting. Because <laughs> we used to always kind of look at each other and go, I don't know, the pointy end, right? And it goes down, you know? So you bring a lot of real world experience to, uh, to the plate here and we really appreciate that. Speak, well, speak for yourself, Roy. I hit that, that giant <laughs> pile of dirt at the end of the rifle range. I hit that every single time, I'll have you know. <laughs> See, he does he does the hundred inch precision iron sight shooting. I, <laughs> well, I, I hate to bring this, this this love fest <laughs> to a halt. And Serena, I am thrilled to death you're here. But whose idea was it to bring a young person on who can outshoot all of us? Mine. That just doesn't seem right. We're we're the uh, experts. Yeah. Uh, technically, I guess I met her first, <laughs> so I would be technically guilty. But you know what? I'm willing to hand that hat off yep. because I think. As, as we're the older guys in the industry, I think one of our jobs and our most important role is to sort of continue to pave the way, open doors, you know, keep pointing the younger generation in the right direction. I don't think Serene is gonna need a lot of pointing though. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we're going to be getting out of her way more than anything. Oh, so. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> in all seriousness, I think what's really cool about bringing her on board is aside from her youth, she has a different uh, you know viewpoint than us old white guys. But we always focus on getting subject matter experts. Well, now we've got a new one, and it just happens to be somebody that's just getting started in their journey. So uh, this is going to be, I hope, a really great match for all of us. Yeah, I think it is. And Serena, what kind of give me a real quick overview of what your role is for uh, FMG right now? So I'm the digital editor, so there's been a lot more items that I never expected to be part of it as far as uh, organizing, running email campaigns, making sure that I have the correct content, and making sure advertisers are happy uh, with what they've submitted so far. But I'm just really excited to be able to expand more website content where not only am I kind of vetting what's there as far as editing a few articles that come in every week, but I'm able to contribute more content to the site and make it a resource besides the print magazines. And, um, and that is an important thing. You're writing for the print magazines too, right? Yes, yes. Well, that, that brings up a good point. We have to have a quick HR discussion here. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to air laundry, but Serena, you've been writing the student handgunner column for the past several issues of American Handgunner uh, when you were a freelancer. And, and for those who mm -hmm. haven't seen it yet, it's basically, uh, you know, Serena's obviously got lots of experience in high power rifle, uh, but handguns are newer to her. And we thought it'd be yes. really cool to do a column that follows someone through their journey to kind of acquire the same level of skill in the handgun world. We've got, you know, five to 10 million new gun owners out there that are hopefully reading our magazines too. So it's kind of a neat way to do that. So, so the HR part here is just because you work here now, uh, you still have to write the student handgunner column. Just What kind of thing <laughs> is have to? I would, I would, I would kill to keep doing that. Not literally kill. I would never do that. That's just an expression. But you're not taking that away from me. No way. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Well, Serena, if someone uh, like a client or a reader or somebody wants to reach out to you, uh, how can they best get a hold of you? Well, my email is Serena, S-E-R-E-N-A dot J-U-C-H-N-O-W-S-K-I, sorry about the last name, at FMGHQ.com. But I'm also reachable on social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. If you, it's easier to just type in Serena J and have it come up, and I can give you my email that way if you can't find it. Okay, outstanding. Well, you know what? Thanks a lot for this, and all success to Serena. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate the warm welcome. 
Welcome right. to the team. Hey guys, I just got back from a very cool training week uh, sponsored by the folks at H&K at a place in Florida I'll tell you about in a minute. So I want to talk about super secret ninja tactical stuff. Game? Game. Let's go. And, and that is? Well, more specifically, my big epiphany was uh, the everyday use of lights. Lights! For all ah, kinds of things. Ah, oh, great. Ah, now I'm blind. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we, we have the highest production yeah. values on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, so I was at a place called Waft Training, W-O-F-T. You can find them at woft.com, and uh, they have got a pretty epic facility going on down down there. And their big specialty and claim to fame is scenario training. So, uh, one of the scenario areas is basically a big almost like a hangar bay where they built an observation deck up top behind protective plexiglass because there's lots of uh, simunition shooting going on in this place. Uh, they pull cars in there and they can basically build things like a, a parking garage, right? Turn the lights out and uh, do all sorts of, of uh, training scenarios where you kind of go into the unexpected and uh, make decisions and live with the consequences. So cool stuff. I don't know, do you guys, do you guys carry lights every day? Like every single day? Every day. Every single day. Every okay. single day. And this is my new favorite I, one. I was going to say this Streamlight, Streamlight Wedge. Yeah, this thing is the really bomb. Is. See, this is not fair. You didn't tell me we were going to talk about lights till I got down here to my man cave. So I actually have that exact same light, and that's my default carry light, too. And I can't even hold it up to prove it. So thanks a lot. And why, why is that? Tell us why that's your default. Because I have a feeling that's important. Okay, so... I, I won't bore you with all the details, but let's just say I ended up uh, walking to my car in the pitch dark because uh, the power went out in the parking garage, and uh, I had a, another type of light, you know, that I thought was pretty simple. Big tail cap button, uh, but you can change modes. You can, you know, five different intensities, and you can turn strobes on and off. And at one point, while getting knifed in the back by two different guys who were posing as drunks, I ended up strobing them putting them on dim light while shooting, strobing some more, turning it off. I'm like, you know what? I'm not as dumb as I look. And I'm sitting there as I'm bleeding out on the floor. Oh, by the way, these were electric shock knives. Oh. So it wasn't like a little rubber thing that goes, ah, oh, I gotcha. It was like, <laughs> like taser knives. Yep. So, so that kind of sucked, but, but it, was good. it was good training. So, so anyway, so, so I'm sitting here thinking, I got to switch my carry knife, my carry light right one yeah. button yeah on full power period <laughs> right yep. Sim oh, you're simple right. is good well you know yeah. i think the full-size duty lights and brent you'll i'm sure agree with me were the my favorite were the stream lights and you just you had one button and you pushed it and they turned yep. on all the way yeah. right and yeah. there was no messing around with anything. And yeah, I, I agree completely. Because a lot of times, remember when the strobing first started to get uh, popular? And everybody did that. I did that. You'd get a light. First of all, you had to read the instruction manual to know how to turn it on, <laughs> which was ridiculous. And then at all the same thing. Every time you turned it on, you'd like go strobe, bright, low, yeah. dim, infrared, <laughs> Laser. you know, and then... and. Laser, uh, yeah, microphone, you know, well, feed I, I your thought, dog. It was just ridiculous. I was ridiculous. being clever with the strobing. I thought, ha, I'm going to be smart with this. Like, because I probably did like 12 scenarios in a row and everyone was different. So it's like, okay, so the, the thousand lumens in the face didn't prevent this guy from trying to stab me. So the next time I went through the scenario, I said, I'm going to hit him with the strobe right away. Because according to the internet, when you put a strobe light on somebody, they instantly drop to the ground in seizures and start crying, yeah. right? Uh, guess what? He still tried to stab nope. the living crap out of me. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. Plus, you can't see yeah. either. That was the other thing that they used to do. They'd well, say, oh, that. turn a strobe on. I, I fell to the floor like, and seizures crying. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, I can't see. You know, I, I, I went and was in a class one time, and I, I want to say Dave Spaulding was there. And, and we were talking after one of these events, and they did the same thing. Somebody, he, he was the bad guy with a gun, and they, so they strobed him. And so Dave said, I couldn't see anything. I just kept shooting. <laughs> and it still, it still hit the guy a half a dozen yeah. times, you know. 
And it was really, because you could tell all this, the flashlight people who were there, they were all like looking at their lights going, what's the problem? You were supposed to die. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. You'll, you'll yeah, find this hard to believe. And I've got a pretty good sample size, as I think Roy does. Scumbags don't read internet forums. They just don't. Well, they should. <laughs> they should. Believe. They should know all this cool guy stuff, they, but they don't. They're just scumbags. <laughs> Because they well, can't true. read. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we could lend a couple of other things is that there's a lot of really small lights, and I have a couple that I keep in my pocket, but that's a backup light. In other words, yeah. you know, that's in case your other lights, because I was on a traffic stop one time, my big duty flashlight battery died, my one on my duty belt, the yep. backup light mm -hmm. died on this felony hot stop, and I ended up using my little pocket AA battery as I actually finished the hot stop. So, yeah. you know, Clint Smith was always famous for mm, saying one is none, two is one. And it's really true. But I would recommend though, if you carry a significant uh, flashlight all the time, because you have to see in the dark in the daytime sometimes, you know, uh, but make it big enough that you can actually grab onto it and hold it and stuff. And I will say that modern, these modern, modern lithium, I guess they're, are they lithium rechargeable yeah. batteries? Lithium ion. Is they're lithium? magic yeah. is what they are. Yeah, they're magic because you yeah. can recharge them and they hold a charge for months and months and months and months. Where the old days, you'd charge them and a week later, you'd turn on yeah. it and go. Well, and, and yeah. the new ones, so they finally those. figured hey, out you, you don't want to have to take the, the darn thing apart to charge the battery. Now you just plug them in and bada right. bing. Right. Yeah. So, Roy, I want to go back to something you touched on just a second ago. Uh, you said even in the daytime, sometimes it's dark. But the other, the other kind of epiphany was I, I carry a light with me a lot of times, especially at night. But I wasn't, let's just confess and say I wasn't in the best habit of carrying one in the daytime. Uh, it's daytime when you need a light bulb. But just as a home experiment, can I, I don't know if I can say this without us getting a giant liability lawsuit. Like, try shining one of these new lights in your own face for a few seconds in broad daylight and see if it doesn't wig out your vision for 10 or 20 or 30 seconds, yeah. you know. Um, no, it's I a agree. good It's a good distraction. If you ever need a distraction or a nonviolent deterrent to somebody who's obnoxiously getting in your space, you know, no harm done. Just like, hey, back off a little bit, buddy. Um that's they actually work pretty darn good in the daytime. I think that wedge is is 300 lumens in its default setting, and that'll get your attention. You know, and, well, yeah. and it does thousand the... because right. it's it's 300, and then right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I like that because this light doesn't do anything yeah. but that. Yeah. In other words, it turns on low where you could see to get the mail and take the trash out and all that, and then it turns on blow, blow you know, burn your eyes out. And I really like that idea, though, about don't be afraid to shine that in some bum's you right. know, eyes in the daytime because they're going to go, hey, yeah. man, what are you doing? Hey, you know? You're not showing a gun. It's not pepper spray. It's not assault. It's a mm. little obnoxious and annoying, and somebody might think you're really weird. But in that transition stage, if you don't know if somebody's just trying to get close to you because they're dumb or because they got bad intentions, it's a good way to find out, yeah. right? Well, plus, say, if hey, anybody says, well, they say, oh, well, he was really mean. And the cop's going to ask you, really, what'd you do? And you say, well, I shined a flashlight on him. You say, I couldn't see well. It yeah. was dark. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, guess that's I will not a say, bad though, thing. there was a time when the strobe flashlights really do work well. You know, if you're at the disco and they just don't have enough light or you want to solo <laughs> dance. <laughs> staying alive. So. Uh, I, I did try that in one of the scenarios, and they all stopped, you know, doing what they're doing because I was being so weird. So th there is something to be said for that. You know. Well, because all the the new young people like Serena have no idea what a disco is. What? Do you like throw that or what? do I do? I think we beat this into we the did. dirt. Do you guys agree? So. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So everybody, go out. Get your go out and get yourself woo. a good flashlight, and then stick it in your pocket woo. every morning. <laughs>
and the Hellcat has a TV set on the top. The Phaser has a TV set on the top. <laughs> you see what I mean? So there's a almost lot identical. of there's a lot. They're almost identical. <laughs> but I think it does beg the question, though, that everybody knows Hellcat. I mean, and you name it, everybody's got one of these guns now. Uh, Ruger Max 9, you know, the P365 from SIG, uh, Taurus's new gun. Uh, there's some one or two other ones out there, at least. Uh, I think we all own them. We all like them. We all carry them. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> and the other thing is, why do we and zillions of other people like these guns. Gentlemen, wade in. Well, Roy, I... Brent, you go first. I'm not sure why you would <laughs> yeah. not use a phaser. <laughs> Wait, I, I wish you... I, good thing you don't have a red <laughs> uniform shirt on. Uh, well, I, I think, <laughs> first of all, it's funny. It's an arms race. We're all trying to see how small we can get. And folks, it's already been done, right? But with you know yeah, I, you I wouldn't necessarily yeah. consider that a, a straight on fighting pistol but you know it's a pain in the neck carrying a gun and will dab said it best recently that it was cool for about three weeks and then it just gets to be a pain in the neck so smaller lighter that's a good thing um and i think that's the big thing and now right frankly i think it's kind of the cool kids gun everybody's got one everybody wants to carry one and I do have to laugh because it's an arms race to see how many more rounds they can stuff into the magazine and still keep the gun about that big. So pretty soon they'll probably announce a 27 rounder, you know, that only sticks out a half inch from the butt. So I, I think mainly it's 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 the cool thing of the moment, but there's nothing wrong with them. Well, you know, I like to call them medium size. I, I, I have a little trouble saying compact because they're, most of these are a little too big to carry in your pocket, you know, unless you're kind of a big guy and you've got loose, you know, cargo pants. Uh, they make really nice in your pocket, like a coat pocket. They're, they're really nice, I think, to carry appendix or inside the waistband or on an outside your waistband holster. You don't even know they're there. Uh, but I agree with you, Brent, is there does seem to be the arms race. And uh, Springfield just introduced the 15-round magazine for the Hellcat, which does extend the the you know grip frame just a little bit, but not too much. But we have to be careful though, because it, it's I see this happening with cartridges. I remember like with the nine millimeter, and then they want a nine millimeter plus P, and then they want a nine by 23, and then it's like, and then somebody else says, well, why don't you just <laughs> buy a 38 Super, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so. So, so I think with these guns, once you start adding on all this stuff and extended magazines and all that, maybe you should start looking at a more of a real holster yep. pistol at that point. You know. See, so I, I think there's actually a too small. And, and granted, this is a little bit of personal preference here, but I, I want my pinky on there. So when I use something like, uh, you know, Hellcat or the GX4, or the you know the Ruger, I want the extension or a slightly longer mag because. Here's, okay, here's physics for you guys. You ready? It's today's math lesson. This finger, physics. pay attention. This yeah. finger right here accounts for something near 40% of your ability to control recoil. Now, if you think about it, it makes sense, right? Bore's up here. This pinky is not as strong, but it's all the way down here. So it's able to put a lot of force on that grip. So this is an important finger mm. right there. I want to use it. No, that actually makes sense. Prove I think that's one of the challenges. Yeah, well, it's one of the challenges with like a J-frame. A lot of people, you can only put two fingers on a J-frame. Yeah. Uh, but I think the round butt maybe of a J-frame. Hey, Roy, was that an AMT that. backup? Uh, uh, no, actually, that this was a uh, Bujakowski TP70, oh, okay. which will okay. be my next insider. Yeah, but it's it's what it's your classic of yeah. you can only get about a finger or two on the grip, and Very he's cool. right about that. I think uh, I think it's one of the charms of these small micro medium pistols that we're talking about. At least for me, is the fact that I can actually. Uh, hang on to the darn thing and so I have what I would call right mainstream medium sized hands and I can actually shoot this gun and I can shoot it like I shoot a full size gun I wouldn't hesitate to take like a three day handgun classic gun sight using a Hellcat uh, yeah. because it doesn't really beat you up 
and a lot of the truly micro guns, like I have an LCP 2380 from Ruger, and I'd be a little hard pressed to take a three day handgun class with that. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was a police officer and I worked at the range, during a semi-auto transition period, we had a detective show up with a Walther PPKS. Mm -hmm. And it was a three-day transition class where we were going to shoot about 500 rounds. Well, he lasted about an hour and a half <laughs> you know, with that gun. And he was like, oh, man, you know, we, we sissified him and everything afterwards. But he went ahead and went to his full-size duty yeah. auto after that. And yeah. I think well, for good reasons. Well, you know, before so, we end this, though, yeah. I've got to say what we usually hit on at some point because it really is the overarching truth. If you're going to carry one, great. But learn how to shoot the stupid thing. Go buy some ammo. Go buy a lot of ammo. And I know it's hard to find and it's expensive. But what you're going to carry, make sure you're good with it. Because even if you got the cool kid gun of the week, it's not going to do you any good if you're missing really fast. And carry it. And carry it. <laughs> Unlike Tom's flashlight. <laughs> I was going to hey. go there, but I was, hey. oh, okay. I was, unlike you, I was too nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, busted. Okay. But I've changed my ways. I learned. I'm not that stubborn. Well, not all the time. Gentlemen, welcome to this important news segment to close out this episode of Gun Cranks. I have some very significant and important news to share with you. After doing a lot of research, I've come up with the top 10 replacements for Wayne LaPierre at the National Rifle Association. Let me get my sign ready. Okay. <laughs> Number 10. We should have a drum roll in there. Nigerian <laughs> scammers. They have no ethics and they already know how to raise money. How would we know that the role changed? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> same stuff, different day, right? That's right. Okay. Number nine, and this is actually, it would be kind of a, a co-executive uh, vice president thing. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they're already spoiled, entitled royalty, therefore no lifestyle adjustments would be needed. Lord, some things aren't even funny to hear, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, how about number eight? Donald Trump. The liberals and Democrats already hate him, so we already got that going for us. <laughs> I like this game. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. Number seven. Like, can we make it the, the top folks 40? folks at Enron, I realize they're out of business, but I'm sure all those folks are still looking for jobs. They've got plenty of experience running scams. <laughs> Ooh. It's <laughs> not going to polish out. No. <laughs> okay. Number six. Martha Stewart. <laughs> She'd run a tight ship, plus we'd have Snoop Dogg, Great Brownies, and Stunning Centerpieces. All over the NRA show. <laughs> We'd exactly. have free brownies at the I, NRA show. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving that one another 10.0. Oh, okay. man. <laughs> okay, number five. How about <laughs> the Octomom? <laughs> she, we can, I can't even imagine that. <laughs> well, it's obvious we could replace the entire executive team with toddlers in one fell swoop. Just like that. Just like <laughs> that. <laughs> Except, we, like I said before, though, will we notice any difference? You know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, moving on. Number four, Bozo the Clown. Now, I, ah, Bozo the Clown! Bozo I, the Clown! Yeah. I realize he's dead, but he has all the necessary personal traits, and he couldn't do a worse job. <laughs> and um, he can do like... And, and the and same the, hair. Yeah. Same hair. And he can do somersaults and stuff, which at <laughs> least would be entertaining. Yeah. Okay, we're coming up on my top three possible replacements for Wayne oh. LaPierre. Number three... I wish I could drum roll. Okay. <laughs> Chuck Schumer. Keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Oh, gosh. I don't. Can we go to the next one, please? Okay. Number two. This may be the best one of all. Tom McHale. It's self explanatory. Oh. 
Ta-da! I'd like to thank I'd like to thank the National Rifle Association, my mom, of course, for all the support okay. over the years. Okay. Uh, the academy. At least, though. And uh, I and most of all, I think I'd like to thank Wayne Lapierre for opening space for me to just ease right into that. Oh, okay. Except he'd have a hundred thousand dollar clothing bill for bow ties. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was gonna <laughs> I'm say not we've speaking out of turn. Yeah, man. I'm not speaking out of turn here. But we have complained yeah, about yeah. Wayne's on him. suit budget. Can you imagine with Tom? I mean, Tom is is very well well laid out sartorially. So yep. it, it, which is a big word for Brent <laughs> exactly. to use in a sense. Sartorial. Exactly. Okay. All right. Do, so is that a job qualification? Do I have to know what sartorial means if I'm going to take? No, over no. Position? You don't have to be smart yeah. to be the president. Tom, yeah. Oh, perfect. I'm there. I am well qualified. Tom, are you? Got all right. It. I think the big thing is, are you a carbon-based life form? I think that's the qualification. Yeah. So, Questionable. Okay. Here we go. Number one. Big drum roll. The number one person to to replace Wayne Lapierre at the National Rifle Association. Chuck Norris, because when the boogeyman goes to sleep, he checks his closet for Chuck Norris. Ta-da! <laughs> can you imagine yeah. an, an NRA led by Chuck Norris? That would just Can you kick imagine? Ass. It would just, you know. Yeah. Sorry, Charlton can, Heston. That, and, yeah. We love you. I'm in. But, you know. Yes. Got my so, vote. in all seriousness, stay a member, become an associate <laughs> member of the NRA. Uh, but don't send him any more money and put all the pressure you can. Tell him, Wayne, na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Yes. Goodbye. See you later. And gentlemen, that was important news and views here on The Gun Cranks. Well, guys, it was another great segment. And as usual, we've had far, far too much fun. Uh, any any nominations for uh, for best actor on this particular one, like William Shatner? Uh, you know, make it stop, Tom. As as much as I hate to give you credit for anything, that was that was pretty good. It was it was okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Just imagine if we actually planned this stuff out. We might really do some good. But as it is, we're the gun cranks. We just throw this thing together and have a little fun. And maybe that's part of our charm. So check us out on our own YouTube channel, The Gun Cranks. Tell all of your friends, your family, uh, stand up in church on Sunday and yell, check out The Gun Cranks. I think everybody would appreciate that. So make sure you uh, check out AmericanHandgunner.com and GunsMagazine.com and all of our great online stuff. Subscribe to five or six issues of the magazine, our special uh, uh, editions. And we keep forgetting to say this, AmericanCop.com. Make sure our editor over there, Denny Hansen, our good friend, uh, knows that you like his stuff too. So check it out and let him know you're, you're reading AmericanCop.com. So gentlemen, any parting words before we uh, call it a night here? I have nothing that I could I, say that could top all this. <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that's the shortest answer that either one of you have ever given. So, on behalf of Roy Huntington and Tom McHale, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us with The Gun Cranks. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>